smart contract security. So smart contracts are programs that operate on top of a blockchain. And an example is something that you can see here. So you have, for example, a smart contract that's called wallet. Uh, it does have a state variable, uh, UN state variable called balance, and uh, it's initialized with 10, the value 10. This smart contract uh, wallet has a function which is called withdraw. And this function withdraw, if a balance is superior to zero, will perform a, a call. Um, so it will send a certain amount of value, um, basically the amount balance to message.sender. Right. Message.sender is is the um, it's kind of the transaction originator. Be careful, there's a difference between TX.origin and message.sender. Um, and after this has performed, um, the balance is set to zero. Now, you can see here, this is a small program and it can handle money. In this particular case, it's Ether, but they can handle any type of token or, or a digital asset that you define. So here, this is a, a transfer of, of money to the, to the caller, right? So, and what do you think can go wrong if we, if we perform such a, if we, if we write down such a program? Is executed on the Ethereum blockchain according to the EVM, and these smart contracts are typically written in high-level high level languages such as Solidity. Uh, and the the important characteristic of such a program is it cannot be patched. Um, like once a contract is deployed at a particular address, it it's persistent um, and cannot be modified. There is a possibility to destroy a contract, but if someone has the authority to destroy a contract, then you might not want to interact with it because otherwise they might, um, and they might, uh, you, you might actually incur a loss depending on the exit condition of this smart contract. So there were many funds stolen from um, from smart contracts over the years, and this is these are just like really some very minor examples, and there, there have been many more. Um, I invite you to to go and search, but just to give you some some hints, um, there are like uh, there was the DAO hack, for example, in uh, 2017, I believe, uh, or 16. So it's quite a while ago. Uh, there was Ether Dice, which was a, a gambling game on the Ethereum network that that had basically some issues and and went down for maintenance. Uh, went down is a bit difficult to say. The smart contract actually never go down, right? Once you deploy them, they run. But what you can take down is, for example, the, the web interface that's interacting or where users interact with the with the platform. Yet, users can still use the... Um, they, might, they might have downloaded the, the web interface, the HTML JavaScript, the static page, and they can still interact with the... With the uh, uh, with the smart contract. Uh, same here, Etherthrone, uh, another another particular game that had a security important uh, security issue. There are many other examples. I really invite you to to go and search. Um, you will find millions of dollars stolen uh, over the years. And um, let's look at the first security bug. So we've already understood a bit solidity, but let's look at this um, first uh, security bug, which is called reentrancy. So this is the same contract that we have just uh, discussed in the in the beginning of this lecture. And let's say we have another user contract and this user contract has a function move balance. And this function calls the withdraw function in the in the wallet contract, right? Here this withdraw function calls into this. So Let's do this. We call into here. So what will happen? Well, we get 10 Ether in return, right? This is the balance. Um, and here we specify balance as, a, as, as what should be sent back to message.sender. Message.sender in this case is the user contract. Now, later, if you want to do this again, we will send, we will issue withdraw again, and then there should be no transfer, right? So can a user contract uh, can the user contract here withdraw more than 10 Ether? It's just somehow possible. Um, there's one little intricacy that you should be aware of. This amount, this this here, is a state variable, right? If you remember the um, the the uh, each address in, in in the Ethereum blockchain, each account 
has a balance, like an ether balance. That's an inherent value of um, attributed by the EVM. So the state variable balance here is is different from the balance uh, of the EVM, right? That, that the EVM uh, records. So these are not the same. And so it might be that they, they, they could be not in sync, right? It could be that this account actually has more than 10 ether. Um, and that's why uh, I'm asking the question, can we, can we remove or can, we, can, can a user withdraw more than 10 ether? What do you think? So let's move on. Now, this here is, um, is, a, is a function. If you, if you, if you call message.sender.call, then you will call the default payable function of message.sender. And this happens to be this little uh, code piece. So if you don't define this in the user contract, then it will just be empty. So it's an implicit function that is there, which you don't see, uh, which is quite bad for security practices. Um, but it, it is it is basically there. Now, what you can do in the user contract um, is you, you can modify this one later on if you want to. And another observation that we have to first take here is that the balance, so the state variable, not the EVM balance of the set account, right? It's very important. It's just, just the state variable here is set to zero only after the ether was transferred. Now, what an adversary can do right here, he can define uh, this fallback function and he can call again. Um, so he basically calls again function dot withdraw. So now what you will see is the 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 programming the the execution flow. It will go into this function here. It will call message dot sender dot call, which this here will go here. This will call wallet dot withdraw, right? And this in return will call again here func the function withdraw. So the balance is actually never zeroed out, right? So the withdraw uh, called here by the adversary is is uh, is, is never. Um, I mean, the balance is never set to zero because we call the withdraw function again before the balance is set to zero. And this actually enabled some adversary to to steal a substantial amount of ether um, because it's uh, because of this implicit nature of of, of reentrancy functions. So let's look at a second example, unprivileged right to storage. So we, here we have again another wallet contract. So we have an address, which is the owner. Um, we have a function init wallet and we have a function withdraw, right? So can you think for a second, pause the video, think what do you think uh, is happening here and why might there be an issue? Okay, I give you a hint. Who can call init wallet? So if you look here at withdraw, right, um, you can see that this can only be done by the owner, right? So if message that sender is equal to the owner, then you can withdraw money from this wallet contract. However, init wallet can be called by anyone. So any user can change the wallet's owner. Uh, attribute uh, his own, I mean, basically become the owner and then withdraw everything. And again, here, an attacker used a similar bug to steal 32 million US dollar at the time uh, that this was exploited. So these are really serious bugs and they're quite tricky to get right. Uh, so basically you need, a, you need some kind of a sanity check here or so-called modifier um, to, to, um, to, to uh, have a proper access control of who can who can initiate a wallet or who can change the owner. So there are many different types of security bugs, so unexpected ether flows, insecure coding practices. Um, uh, yeah, what we've just seen is an unprivileged write. Um, you, there can be the use of unsafe inputs. So for example, you, you don't want, um, sometimes you may not want to use the block hash as a source of randomness because it can be manipulated. Um, there are reentrant methods calls. And, um, we'll look at the DAO in, in a while. Uh, and there's also a transaction reordering 
problem where uh, miners can reorder transactions in, in the block and this might cause troubles on the application layer. So how can we verify the security of a smart contract? So on a, on a very high level, right? We have, um, if we perform, if we want to perform automated security analysis, what do we do? Well, let's say this is here the, the space of all possible contract behaviors. And there might be a few blocks, right? I mean, statistically speaking, uh, you always program, you always create some bugs uh, uh, when, when, when coding. And uh, we cannot enumerate all possible contract behavior, so we need to somehow identify those bugs, right? And the existing solution is testing, so you can write unit testing and you might, uh, you might catch a bug or two uh, through that. And it's, it's quite important to do unit testing. But you still have very limited guarantees and you don't, you're not really sure uh, to cover much. And then there's dynamic analysis or symbolic execution that's already better, right? It covers like a, a bigger surface of this behavior of the, of the smart contract. Um, it's better than testing, but can still miss some vulnerabilities. And then you have static analysis or formal verification. And here you can see it's basically over approximating the, uh, the, the space of possible contract behaviors. So it has, uh, the problem is, it, it, I mean, it might have some strong guarantees, but it does have false positives. Uh, so sometimes you have like a bunch of uh, like potential bugs that you need to sort through, which is a lot of work. So there's no silver bullet here, uh, bullet. You have really have to go through everything and, and try to do the best practices. I, I would really recommend going through the whole uh, through the whole mechanisms of our automated security analysis if you want to deploy a smart contract and um, also employ manual um, audits to, to, to increase your confidence. Yet, uh, there's no such thing as 100% security, right? Um, so no matter how much effort you put into securing your smart contract, you, there's always the likelihood of, of, of you having a bug there. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's just uh, the, the game in security.